Hey, it's Phil from Euroheat, and commonly people are asking, why are heat pumps all the rage? Why are they so popular? Why can't we just put in a gas boiler like we had in our old house? Or, you know, why do we need this new technology that we don't understand? And so, let me take a minute or two of your time and quickly explain why they're so good. So, first of all, gas boilers, they were, they were great when energy was cheap, gas didn't cost much, you know, you just burn gas, transfer the heat to water, you send it to wherever you wanted to go, and everyone was happy, everyone was nice and warm, easy to do. These days, gas prices are going up, and also the efficiency is physically limited by the laws of physics with the, with the boiler. So that means that for every one kilowatt of gas you put into the boiler, with a traditional boiler, the efficiency was limited to about 80 to 85%, which means you would get 0.8 to 0.85 kilowatts of heat out from every one kilowatt of uh, gas you put in. These days with condensing boilers, which uh, are, are great and they work at low temperatures, so what they do is they uh, recover the heat that would normally be wasted from the exhaust gases of the boiler they actually preheat the incoming water with this exhaust gas so that the exhaust gas that comes out now is not actually warm, but it's just, it, it's, it's quite cool if the system is designed well. And these have an efficiency of anywhere between 95% uh, to let's say up to 107, 108%. So that means for every one kilowatt of gas that you put in, you get out 0.95 to 1.07 kilowatts of heat energy out, which is not too bad, but gas prices are rising and the gas boiler can only heat. Now heat pumps, they're fantastic because not only can you heat with it, but you can also cool with it. So that means that you don't need as much equipment and that you can consolidate a lot of the services in your house. But what's even better is that the efficiency is higher. So let's say for an air to water heat pump, your efficiency might, might be on average, let's say 350%. So that means if I put $1 into my heat pump of electrical energy, I'm going to get three and a half dollars worth of either heat or chill out of the heat pump. So that's great value. Great value compared to, let's say if you did the same with the boiler, you, you get less because the efficiency less. Now, of course, you need to take into account the different input prices of the energy. So gas is still cheaper than electricity, but if you do the maths on it, depending on where you are exactly and your agreement with your gas supplier and your electricity supplier, the heat pump heating still works out to be, let's say 40 to 50% less expensive per hour to run than the gas boiler. Now, the setback with the heat pump is twofold. First of all, there is a higher capital cost. So you have to invest a little bit more to be able to reap the, the benefits of it. Which, these days, it's not too bad because it's actually becoming every year more and more affordable to have a heat pump. Second of all, there can be limitations with certain heat pumps. So heat pumps aren't generally made to produce 80 degree water, 70 degree water, or very rarely even 60 degree water. Most heat pumps, their limit is 55 to 60 degrees. And the reason is that uh, with the whole refrigeration, refrigeration cycle, that that's basically what it's limited to by the laws of physics. And so you can get heat pumps that generate higher temperature water, which we can help you with, but it actually has to be set up in a, in a different way than your traditional off-the-shelf heat pump. So you can actually generate uh, hot, really hot water really efficiently with a heat pump too, but it just needs to be a separate setup from a typical off-the-shelf heat pump. But I digress. Heat pumps, the top limit is around the 55 to 60 as we said, but they actually are more efficient with the lower water temperature produced. So let's say 35 to 40 degrees, that's, the op that's probably the optimum for most heat pumps with heating. And that means that you get a high COP, a high efficiency value, and they work really well. So heat pumps are also fantastic when you have solar power, because obviously heat pumps, they use electricity. So uh, if you have solar power, you can obviously use that or store that power to be used by the heat pump. So you can have, uh, if your house and your system is designed right, theoretically you can have a net zero house or a building where it doesn't actually cost you anything to say, heat or cool your house or, or heat up your tap hot water or heat your pool or cool your cellar.
And so what's actually even better than a standard heat pump, say one that you would get off the shelf, is a heat recovery heat pump. And so what I mean by heat recovery is, with a typical heat pump, let's say air to water, you have on one side it might be producing uh, cold water for use for your air conditioning or, or your cooling, and on the outside you'll notice that the fan outside is actually blowing out hot air, it's, it's rejecting heat. So instead of rejecting this heat into the atmosphere, the heat recovery heat pump collects this heat so it can be used for your tap hot water or your pool or let's say you have a hotel and you're both heating and cooling simultaneously. You, you don't have to produce both heat and both chill, but you are producing uh, both heat and chill from the one machine and that means you get super high efficiencies, let's say, of around 600% or a COP of 6. So if you'd like help with either selecting or design and installation of the right type of heat pump for your building, be it air to water, uh, geothermal or water source, or even a heat recovery heat pump combined with any one of these three, we'd love to help you out at Euroheat. Give us a call for a quick 15 minute chat and hopefully we can work together.